Hi, my name's Simon. Welcome to another video where I'm going to share with you some hints and tips about how to improve your online teaching environment. And in this video, I want to share with you news of a brand new app that's available to everyone. You can see it behind me. It is Google Meet. Google Meet used to be a paid for app that was offered to businesses. But since the coronavirus lockdown and the success of video conferencing apps such as Zoom, Google has decided, right, we want a bit of that action. And so they've made this available to absolutely everyone. And from an English teaching point of view, this is something that you might want to use. And I'll explain why later on in this video. So the first thing you want to do is go to meet.google.com. There's a link below this video, or you can use those nine buttons in the top right hand, top right hand corner of the screen. I'll just drag it across here, just over there. So if you click on that, you'll see the icon for meet, which is just above my head, and it'll take you to the right place. Once you're here, just click on start a meeting and you'll be taken to this page. Of course, I must say that you'll need a Google account. If you don't have a Google account, then I suspect you won't be able to use this, um, but I'm not sure about that. I'm just making a common sense assumption. Right now behind me, you can see a gray screen. And the reason why you can see a gray screen is because I haven't turned on the virtual camera on OBS. So let me bring across OBS, click on tools, and there's my virtual camera here. Now, a couple of things to say. If you can't see the virtual camera option, you haven't got it installed. So make sure you install it. There's a link below this video to um, a number of resources, including one of my videos, which tells you how to do that. The second, second thing to say is if you are using an Apple Mac, this is not going to help you. In other words, you will not be able to use this on Apple Macs. I've done other videos about this. There are workarounds for this. They are not easy. Unfortunately, this plugin virtual camera does not work well with Apple Macs, at least not as of today, which is the 20th of May 2020. So I'm sorry if you've got an Apple Mac, look no further. This is this video isn't for you. For You can use your other webcam for Google Zoom, not a problem, but you won't be able to use OBS. For people on who are using Windows, then this is for you. Make sure you've got the virtual camera installed. Click on that. Click on start. The virtual camera is now working. And if I move this out of the way, you can see behind me that Google is now picking up OBS. If I click on these three buttons here, I can go to the settings menu and I've got a couple of options here. First of all, I've got uh, to choose my microphone and the speakers. Here you can see the three bars working away. So my microphone is being picked up and I can see if my speakers will work as well, which they do. If I go to video here, I can choose either my hardware, in this case, the Logitech C920 or OBS camera. So if you're not seeing anything still, make sure that you've selected OBS camera. Another really good thing here is that you can check, you can choose the resolution that you want to send and receive uh, the video. So you can either choose standard definition or high definition. I would recommend, unless you're 100% sure that everyone's got fantastic super duper internet, just go for standard definition. It is generally more than enough. Okay, with that set up, the only other option is general, which is about sending diagnostics to Google. Untick that, tick that as you wish. Let's click on done. The good thing that Google has done here is that they've given you the screen. So first of all, you can see if OBS is working, which it is, and you can see the microphone buttons here fluttering away in the corner. So straight away, you can see that the microphone and the video is working. So with OBS now being set up, let's get into a meeting and find out what Google's, uh, Google Meet has to offer us. And we do that by clicking this green button, join now. Now here, I can add people if I want to, but I don't want to, I just want to get used to Google Meet. Let's click out of the way. And the first thing you'll see straight away is that the screen behind me is going absolutely bananas. 
The reason for this is because the browser screen is set to the whole uh, monitor. It's basically on maximize or whatever it's called. If I double click the top bar to minimize the window, then suddenly things return to normal. So that's a little bit weird, but nevertheless, uh, you can avoid that problem quite quickly. And of course, if you go onto a different Google tab, then that problem doesn't happen. It's just when you've got the uh, the Google Meet tab open that things start going a bit bananas. So let's go onto a different tab. And of course, this works as if you would be using Skype or Zoom. So if I wanted to drag in a PDF, for example, from another monitor, then I can. And you can see this on your OBS screen. So here's the PDF behind me. If I get the PDF out of the way, I can see the Google screen. So this pretty much works as it's meant to, as it works with Zoom or Skype. Now, let's show you the cool thing about why you might want to use this for English teaching. So I'm going to minimize the window and I'm going to go to the meet option and I'm going to turn on the captions. You can see that just next to me here. And this is really good because it starts to pick up very accurately, I must say, what I am saying. And if you are showing this to your student, then this is a fantastic way for your student to hear and read what it is that you're saying. And um, I'm looking at the text as I'm talking now, and it's pretty good. Um, it's not so good with other languages. So if I start, say, if I start talking in Pidgin Polish, then suddenly it starts coming up with all kinds of nonsense, but probably reflects my Polish in all honesty. But uh, in English, or the language it's set to, and I'm not sure how many languages this is set to, it picks up English very, very well. So this is a fantastic English teaching tool and I'm pretty sure you can come up with a number of different applications or uses for this. So this is a really good thing that perhaps sets it apart from Zoom. I'm not sure if you can do this on Zoom, but you definitely can't do this on Skype. So this functionality alone might convince you to use Google uh, Meet and the fact that everyone uses Google products anyhow, generally. Now, the one thing that you might have noticed in the screen behind me is that there is a mirror image. Now, I've not tested this with students, so I'm not sure if the students are seeing things as it's meant to be seen or whether they're seeing a mirror image. So, for example, if I put up this Word document, which I'll make a bit bigger, it's hello, can you see me? If I go, if I bring back the Google interface um, and let's move, turn off the captions. It's difficult for me to show you this without the Google screen going a bit mental, but there is a mirror image in the Google uh, interface. So straight away, I'm not sure, is the student seeing the text the right way around or is the student seeing the text the wrong way around? One thing you can do here is you can go back to OBS. Now, OBS has got a fantastic feature. First of all, you've got to click uh, on display capture. So this is showing in my monitor. If I right click on display capture, I can go to transform. And if I go to transform, there's an option here which is called flip horizontal. When I click that, there's a mirror image of my screen and if the student is seeing the text back to front, then suddenly your student will be seeing the text the correct way round. As I said, I haven't played with this. I haven't tested this with students. I don't know what students can see. It might be that you don't need to do this. It might be the case that you do. And if you do, that's how you do it. Okay, so there we go. That's Google Meet. That subtitles functionality is fantastic. It alone might be enough to convince you to use this instead of other video conferencing products from an English language point, the teaching point of view. 
It does have other foibles, as I've shown in this video. Potentially, you might have to change the mirror image, and then suddenly, if this is on the max, if you maximize the Google Meet window, then it just goes balmy. So, this is an application you would ideally use with two monitors. Doing everything on one monitor will be a challenge, so that's also something to think about. But it's always nice to have another option other than Skype and Zoom and Microsoft Teams, if that's what you're using, to present to your students and to teach online. If you've got any questions at all about this video, then leave them in the comments below. If you would like me to produce any more content on anything to do with teaching online using Zoom, Skype, Google Meet and uh, OBS, then let me know and I'll do that. I'll produce that content for you. I'll see you soon.